Today we're talking about aerial diplomacy, or as the United States Air Force likes to call it, warheads on foreheads. And when it comes to delivering unhealth care in bulk, Uncle Sam calls upon one thing. The B-52 Strato Fortress. Also known as the Buff, which stands for the Big Ugly Fat Fella. Sorry, I'm not allowed to swear on the first 30 seconds of my videos or I get in trouble. Anyways, back to Buffy the Forehead Slayer over here. This thing is capable of carrying 35 tons of warheads at a time. Going at a top speed of 650 miles an hour for up to 8,800 miles on a single tank of fuel. And if the target is more than 4,500 miles away, it's capable of aerial refueling, meaning it can leave America, go anywhere on the planet, blow anything up at once, and then come back. A great example of this is Operation Chrome Dome from... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Who named that? Apparently the Air Force really wanted to set a tone back in the Cold War. Not only are they going to be putting warheads on foreheads, they're going to be dropping something so bright your hemisphere is going to be putting off reflections. Anyways, as you can see here, Operation Chrome Dawn went from 1960 to 1968, where they basically kept B-52s in the air at all times, flying around the majority of the USA and the USC, also known as Canada. Those B-52s were equipped with nuclear warheads to engage the Soviet Union should the need arise. So yeah, we were helping to protect Canada and their universal health care with our universal unhealth care. I feel like they should at least give us a free checkup or something. You know, on second thought, they are willing to fight grizzly bears to get us that tree-flavored Kool-Aid, so I guess we're even. Luckily, it's never come to using nuclear warheads, but even without nuclear warheads, a B-52 is a force on the battlefield. Above the battlefield? I don't know. Anyways, the buff has been in use since 1955, and it's slotted to remain in use till after 2050. There's quite literally been fathers and sons that have flown the same exact plane. Longevity like that is due to its superior design, relative low cost compared to other bombers, and the Air Force maintainers that take an extreme amount of pride to keep these things in the air. Because at the end of the day, it might take a pilot with a college degree to fly this thing, but it takes an Air Force maintainer with a high school diploma to make this thing fly. So what does a B-52 do when it's not carrying nuclear bombs? That's easy, it's carrying a shit ton of regular bombs. Good old fashioned bad guy to baloney mist technology. It's capable of carrying 84 500 pound bombs and dropping them basically all at once. I'm trying to tell you the B-52 is like the Johnny Appleseed of freedom. No, the Johnny Freedom Seed. When he comes through to plant a forest of red, white, and blue woods, not only are the bad guys going to cease to exist, but you're going to have to hire a cartographer to update the topographical maps. Because Johnny's about to add a new terrain feature known as a coitus ditch, also known as a fucking hole. In conclusion, if you're a bad guy listening in on radio transmissions and you hear B-52, they're not playing bingo, but you are about to win a free cremation. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoy my content, maybe you'd like to buy me a beer about it. There's a link for that right here. There's also the link for all my merchandise. Like my Warheads on Foreheads t-shirt. If you're on YouTube, that link is in the video description. So until next time, thanks for your service. Quack bang out.